Good day. My name is Ray Roberts, and I'm going to talk to you about the legal aspects of teacher evaluation. Just to give you a little background on the ESA Act, that's the Every Student Succeeds Act. It was it was instituted and or brought into law in December of 2015. And basically, what it says is that every state has the right to determine, develop, and implement their own teacher evaluation measures, instruments, and protocols. This is, a, this is actually good because it allows the state to put in variables that are unique or situations that are unique for, for or elements rather that are unique for that particular state or school district. Uh, it's important also to note that ESA is a right preserving provision and not a right saving provision. And basically what that means is that whatever was in effect at the time of ESA stays in effect. Uh, ESA really doesn't give you any new rights. Basically ESA requires districts to make sure as they develop these new teaching evaluation instrument measures and protocols that all stakeholders are involved. That includes teachers, principals, community leaders, teacher unions. Everyone should be at the table to develop these measures and approve these measures. It also, ESA also says that these new measures must be piloted. It must be, it must be tested uh, before um, using them, uh, green lighting them, and using them to, um, to rape teachers and possibly terminate teachers. So it needs to be piloted and also funded. So why improve teacher evaluation? Why go through all this hassle of improving teacher evaluation? Basically, uh, there was a time where basically the nation wanted to improve student achievement. Um, they saw low performance schools. Everyone really were, wanted to link test scores uh, to student achievement and they felt that if we were able to evaluate te teachers more appropriately um, that we could raise test scores and therefore raise student achievement. Um, just a little background, in 2009 the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act issued 4.3 billion dollars to uh, the US Department of Education uh, which funded Race to the Top initiatives. Uh, as a result, um, you had a whole pool of states who wanted to get a part of that $4.3 billion. So they went online with a lot of these initiatives, uh, including uh, revamping their teacher evaluation policies. Um, it's also important to note that this new trend also has affects and affected uh, tenured teachers. So we saw this in, in states like Colorado. We also saw this in my home state of Maryland, or we, have, we see it currently in my home state of Maryland. Also in the attempt to uh, approve the evaluation process, um, these, dis these districts had to come up with objective protocols that should have been that should be unbiased and as close as accurate as possible to measure uh, teacher effectiveness. Uh, one, one model is the value added model. Unfortunately, um, right now it looks like there's not good research that links uh, the new evaluations to uh, student achievement um, so a lot of the new evaluations that these districts made have been contested by, by teachers and teacher unions. Okay. So some teachers are saying, you know, it's not poor if we work, it's not fair rather if we're working in poor communities that, you know, that, that are striped by poverty or you have emerging uh, communities with ESL speakers we have special needs students. You know, all of these factors, some teachers believe, uh, should not be uh, counted.
counted in or should be counted in depending on how uh, to help them out in their ratings because otherwise they will receive an unsatisfactory rating. Uh, but there is some some positive news there. There is a, a a study that does say that if a teacher is on the verge of being terminated or on the verge of being, receiving a pay increase because uh, the teacher performed well uh, and they need a little boost, that teacher evaluation would help them out. All right, so let's talk about some of the litigation uh, that has sprung up um, concerning teacher evaluation. So over the last several years, teachers and teacher unions have basically taken school districts to court uh, because of the way a lot of the new teacher evaluations were implemented and rolled out. So we will see we see lawsuits mainly because um, teachers weren't getting uh, their performance uh, salaries or uh, bonuses or salaries salary increases. Uh, some teachers were being dismissed, um, and some teachers just just didn't like or thought it was the merits of uh, which they were being measured weren't fair. Um, we're going to talk about the school district that I started in, which is Baltimore City Public Schools. Um, as I mentioned in my uh, previous modules, I'm, I have I've been out of the Baltimore City Public School system system for a very long time. Uh, I've been working international and internationally as a consultant, um, and in many cases, uh, the sc the schools and the countries. Um, that I work in are develop, developing countries or third world countries and they don't have the laws that we have in America surrounding teacher rights and professional development, improving teachers. Um, so for the purpose of this exercise, um, I drew back and I did some re current research and spoke to some, some folks uh, in the Baltimore City Public School System. Um, just to confirm the information. A lot of the information I did receive uh, off of the Baltimore City Public Schools website and a lot of the information is current as uh, as per this school year. Okay, so let's talk about Baltimore City Public Schools. So basically, ba Baltimore City Public Schools, when the, the components that they use to measure teacher effectiveness, uh, they basically use four components. Okay, the first component, which is student learning objectives. Um, the student learning objectives basically uh, is, is the teacher is measured based on how well he or she can create learning objectives for a particular or specified group to move that group uh, into positive gains as it relates to student achievement. So uh, students in his or her class are, are, are to be identified and uh, learning objectives are to be implemented with those students. Uh, sounds to me kind of like a kind of a lax IEP, uh, kind of an informal IEP. Uh, it reminds me of when I was in Baltimore City Public Schools, we had to do portfolios on uh, particular students, individual students. Um, so a teacher will get 35% of their evaluation based on that one component. The other component is the school performance measure. Um, the school performance measure, that is one where a lot of teachers actually complain about because it is not just the teacher, but it's the entire school environment. That's the entire school climate. Um, is, is how well the school is cultivating student achievement, student learning, uh, and the theory behind it is that teachers and principals and other staff uh, play a part in that. So the teacher is measured 15% on how well they're playing a part in that regard. The third measure is professional expectation measures. 
Uh, this is basically everything that does not have to do with deal with direct instruction. Okay, you get temp the teacher will get observed or measured 10% in that component. So this would be volunteering for after school, uh, you know, professional courtesy, uh, whether they're late for work, things of this nature. Okay, and then you see two more boxes, and this will be your classroom observation. Uh, so, and there, and for each one of these components, there is a rubric uh, that is issued that explains to the teacher exactly what they need to do to be successful. Uh, here's one of the ones for uh, the learning environment, the school performance measures. Gives you an example of some indicators. Okay, and Baltimore City uh, still follows the uh, clinical supervision model, pre-conference pre observation, post-observation. Okay, that, that was the same model that they followed back when I was working for them starting August of 2000. All right, so what happens if a teacher does not agree with their evaluation. Well, if a teacher does not agree with their evaluation, they can go to the office of uh, the Baltimore City Public School Office of Labor Relations. If they don't like that outcome, they can go to the Baltimore City Public School Board of Commissioners. They can again appeal to the Maryland State Board of Education. This is the same thing, this is the same protocol if they were to uh, they felt like they were uh, terminated uh, unjustly. They would follow the same protocol. Okay. Uh, an example of this is uh, of this protocol being followed is Bird versus Baltimore City Board of School Commissioners. Okay, and another as it relates to an actual lawsuit that was brought brought against Baltimore City Public Schools relating to teacher evaluation. Uh, it was an interesting one. Bowman versus Baltimore City uh, Board of School Commissioners. Basically, uh, teacher Bowman uh, was a was found to be an outstanding teacher. She was rated as uh, an excellent teacher, um, uh, the highest rating that you can get in Baltimore City Public Schools, uh, superior teacher, and um, uh, she was made a team leader. I was doing very excellent, uh, and um, in her opinion, uh, there was some racial discrimination going on in the school. She addressed it. Uh, she felt like she was being retaliated against uh, by the principal because she was addressing some possible race, race, uh, racial discrimination or discrimination issues in the school. Um, and one day she was terminated. Uh, so. Uh, she took it to court. Right now, it is still in progress. Baltimore City Public Schools filed a motion to dismiss, but that motion was denied. So uh, I'm, interest, I'm very interested to follow up on this case because it's a very interesting case. Uh, what would I do to basically make, make sure that um, as a school leader that was following the law, basically I would follow, uh, make sure that I'm totally aware of any new updates and changes in the protocol as per the handbook and as per uh, the Maryland uh, uh, regulations uh, center, centered around uh, teacher evaluation because uh, there's a uh, there's an actual code in for the Maryland Department of Education that Baltimore City follows on top of any new updates. I would hold professional developments also in that regard, making sure that everyone knew what their rights were, make sure I knew where my rights were, and other people's rights, and basically having a community of, de of democracy, having a community of due process, uh, making sure that you know we're following um, the, the protocols and procedures laid out um, because they are tried, true, and tested. Thank you very much for your time. I hope uh, you received some important, some pertinent information about teacher evaluation. Thank you.